All right, good afternoon. This is the DCN Smoke coming to you live from Wilson, North Carolina with one of my friends, Lindell K., a former award-winning journalist with the Rocky Mount Telegram <laughs> investigator. <-winning> investigator. <laughs> with, the, with the Rocky Mount Telegram. Yep. Um, I um, reached out to my friend and we set up an interview for today. I hadn't talked to him in a while and he was uh, willing to do it. So I am here and here we go. We just don't talk off the cuff. We ain't had nothing planned. He don't, he don't even know what I came to talk about. I don't even know what I came to talk right. about, I, but I wanted to tell you him. You also don't know what you're talking about, I think. <laughs> That's right. It's just whatever, how the wind blows. Uh, but I do want to start out and tell you a little bit about you. Won't you tell you a little bit about yourself? Sure. Especially coming to um, Rocky Mount. And uh, we're we going to be short because we got a lot of time. Yeah. Um, so uh, go right ahead. Let, let me just start by saying that anything that I say today is, is my opinion and not representative of any of my employers. I'm sure that they um, might not agree with everything that I, I have to say. So I want to get that out of the way. Uh, I got to Rocky Mount in 2015. Uh Following a newspaper job, I worked for the Telegram for five years. I moved on to the Wilson Times and then from there to the National Graphic for about a year, all in the process of retiring from newspapers so I could teach, which I do now. I teach journalism and English and communications at several different colleges in the area. Uh, Telegram, I enjoyed my time there. I got uh, wrapped up in a lot of different uh, things. I, I was able to take what I had learned and 20 years as a investigative reporter and apply that to Rocky Mount. I found a lot of interesting things out that folks didn't know and I uh, like to think I contributed a little bit to, uh, to the town while I was there and I have basically moved on. Still live in Nash County. I've lived in Spring Hope since, since I got here. Uh, I've, I've moved a couple of times all within a block of where we started at I like Nash County. I like Nash County folks. Um, I like I like the area. I'm from North Carolina, so I mean that's all you need to know about me. I got a, a wife and five kids. All right, sounds good. Um, okay, we we talked about that part. Tell me a little bit about. Oh, oh, you left out something though. Um, you also had a lot of um background with um. I would say murder and missing women. Yeah, Check on absolutely. that a little bit. Yeah, um, I started uh, very early in my newspaper career, 20-something uh, years ago. Figured out that there was a, there was a direct correlation between uh, minority victims and unsolved crimes. And I, once I put that together in my own head, I began to uh, write about that and had some success along the way with some cases. Uh, one case, I ended up uh, helping a police chief go to prison for a murder that was committed 50 years ago. There was some other cases like that, and I, I brought that to Rocky Mount, and I wanted to, you know, Rocky Mount has uh, quite a few unsolved murders, uh, almost at, at least 70 that, at last count. I, I kind of I uh, moved on from that a little bit to other things, but, but certainly still uh, try to keep my... Uh, wits about me in that arena and I helped found uh, Team Cold Case which is a uh, uh, still going strong and still paying out money for unsolved murders we we've, we've helped with some of them Johnny Cunningham probably being the most prominent uh, information that we provided uh, led directly to the arrest of the person accused of killing him he was a friend of mine I, I'd known him since I've been here which kind of that, that I remember that was a sad day when I found out that 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 had happened and um you know just just trying to help i mean that that's why I, I believe people should help how they can and, and what they do and 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 writing was something i've always been good at so it was good to be able to apply that to uh something that that needed the attention yeah um uh, uh talking about mentioning johnny cunningham uh johnny cunningham and i was um somewhat in the same situation with with you and i um at one point in time and and uh, once we got to know each other, uh, things changed. And that's why I tell people all the time, I have no permanent friends, no permanent enemies, only permanent interests. 
And sometimes uh, we be going back and forth. Well, I be going back and forth with folk, but I be just waiting till the time come when they get to know the real story because a lot of time they don't get the whole story. And once they, um, you know, be here for a while and they learn what's going on, they'll get another perspective. And I always tell people, don't just take my word for it. They do their own homework. And it seems like we be going at it, but, you know, it takes that to get where we need to get. Well, yeah, you, you know, know uh, Proverbs says that uh, friends sharpen each other like knives, right? That's so, right. So I've, I've never given anybody any slack. I've never, I've never, uh, I've never expected any, and, I, and I've never went easy on anybody. And so, you know, that's how you get to know people. Did you get all that? I don't know if I could recreate that magic. <laughs> I, I often don't know what I say. <laughs> and myself either. And sometimes I don't even go back and um, look at, I don't even go back and look at what I said because I don't even remember what I said. Um, people be telling me what I said. But um, again, getting back to you, um, like I said, we don't have a lot of time today. And I'm just glad you took the time, took time out of your busy schedule. I've been busy today too. Ain't feeling my best right now, but I had this on the list and I couldn't turn it down. But uh, getting back to us, you know, I, I just think about all the time when we were going back and forth, and and people don't understand. Um, you know, we we still talked. Right. <laughs> you know, we were going back and well, forth. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean I, that was part of my job, and mm -hmm. as a reporter, and and I never took anything personal. That's right. You know, I never take anything personally. I was I, I realized that for a lot of stuff that I was reporting on in Rocky Mountain was personal to people. And That's I, right. Because that was their home, and I and I respect that. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I was just doing my job. And, That's right. And, and my job leads me wherever. Sometimes I disagree with people. Sometimes I agree with them. Sometimes I don't care one way or another. Mm -hmm. But it was all, you know, all part of doing the job. And, That's and right. And you've been here, you've been here doing this, what, since the 1980s? So <laughs> right, I mean, in the late you know, 80s, yes, sir. Right. So, I mean, you... Mm -hmm. You know, you were obviously a, a person to know and and uh, an opinion to value. So, I mean, we didn't always agree on things, but, I mean, I always uh, valued what you had to say. Right, well, it, see it what would happen. It would be foolish for me not to. You That's know? right. I mean, it would, be, it would be foolish for a newcomer to come into an area, uh, just like fighting crime. You know, a lot of, a lot of folks don't, don't like fighting crime, but she does get the information out. That's right. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, so, yeah. I mean, I... I I made acquaintances with people who uh, helped me in what I was doing. That's right. And the only thing about fighting crime I had a problem with, and I reached out to her too. I reached out to everybody. You know, we talked. And, and my thing was just report the facts. I know you're reporting what people are telling you, but okay, here we go. I know the other side. Right. So all I'm saying is just get to know both sides. And, she and has <laughs> improved. Though, oh, yes, yeah, she has. I she can has. tell you that um, from, from when I first got here in 2015, she was reporting a lot of radio traffic. Right. You know, mm -hmm. police radio traffic, they're only talking about what they've been told. <laughs> you know, so I remember one time there was a incident where a, a gentleman slammed his hand on the wall. He was in the hospital room and his brother was hurt and he was upset and he banged the wall. And then a, somebody on the other side of the wall thought it was gunfire. So they reported that there was a shooting <laughs> at the hospital and that went everywhere. Wow. You know? And when, when, but it, it fell on me to check the facts of it. That's right. And so you can't always, you can't report what, uh, you can't report radio traffic or what someone tells you. I mean, you got to get to the bottom of it. And that was, you know, one thing about my reporting is that I always felt comfortable with that I had gotten to the, to the facts of things. You That's know? right. And some people don't agree with me. Some people. Don't. Oh, yeah. But I was comfortable with what I knew. But and, you, you know, went back you know, and got it right. Things. Yeah, yeah. Right. And if I did, I did. You I went back wrong. and got it right. I got it uh -huh. wrong. Uh -huh. I got it wrong before plenty of time. Uh -huh. But that was the, that's the one, the hallmark of true journalism. That's is, right. That you go back and you get it right. And uh -huh. that's what I tell my students. You know, I teach journalism. I tell them all the time that, that you know, you make mistakes, but you, you got to correct that mistake that's in right. the same way, in the same manner that you made the mistake. And I, a really quick example. Uh -huh. You know, it, it, a correction is not always enough, though. So sometimes if you put out bad information, people might not never see that correction. And they may, they may go on and, and labor in ignorance. And that's why it's really important to get it right the first time, if you can. can you know, I mean, it's a tightrope because you're trying to be first. But at the same time, you want to be correct. So it's always, um, let me say this, since I retired, I, I retired from journalism uh, in August. 
and it was the first time in 25 years that I haven't had a daily deadline. And it took, it, I still haven't really got over it, but it's nice to hear a siren and not have to follow it. <laughs> right. It's nice to hear a little bit of gossip and not have, to, have to follow it, it you know. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I'm adjusting to a whole new, a whole new life. I know that's right, um, because that's how I am when I hear a siren or, or see the police car go by, you know, I'm like, I, I want to know what's going on. And you're talking about um, how she used to follow radio traffic. Back in the day, I had uh, a portable CB radio that I kept in the car. And um, you know, I went to the scene of a lot of things. And um, and, I, and that's what I And so I, I ended my career covering politics. I covered politics in, in Rocky Mountain, Nash County for the last several years of my career. And, I'm you know, I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. I mean, I, I'd like to think I made some differences. There was there was a few stories in my career that that were really important and helped expose uh, some things. You know, Mark Twain said that journalism is telling people what, saying something that people don't want you to say, right? And I mean, I did a lot of that. Oh, yeah. I yeah. catch that myself, and, and you know, and that's not my, my daily occupation. But let's quickly move forward to um, Rocky Mount politics. Uh, when you came and when you left, how do you see it today? Oh wow, um, I'm I'm not sure that it, that the needles moved any, <laughs> Nancy. I'm really not sure. I mean, when when I got there, there was um, I mean, you know, Rocky Mountain is is I'm not telling you nothing you don't know, but I mean, my first when I interviewed for my job at the Telegram, Jeff Heron, who's you know he's he's this gone now, yeah. right? He told me he said Rocky Mountain is very unique in that it is the largest city in two counties, but it's not the county seat in either one. And it's divided right down the railroad tracks, right? You've got mm -hmm. uh, blacks, uh, a majority of blacks on one side, a majority of whites on the other side. They don't seem to get along about nothing. And I stepped into that, you know, thinking, wow, you know, this is nothing new to me because I've covered some places, but I've never covered anywhere quite like Rocky Mountain. <laughs> and I'll tell you that. And, and it, um... Gosh, how do, you, how do you explain that? I mean, it took me years. It took me many years to, and I'm not sure I even do now. But it took me a long time to understand Rocky Mountain mm. and the maneuvers that people make and the political moves that people make, thinking that, that they're three steps ahead when they're really behind. Mm -hmm. And a lot, I think, a lot of stuff gets sacrificed. In this oh yeah, whole, mm -hmm. uh, who's in charge? You know, there's this mm -hmm. like this, just this real concentration on who's in charge, mm -hmm. and who's, you know, who's ahead, and all that. And I think it hurts Rocky Mountain. It does, overall. it does. You know, and, and on, on, on all sides. You know? Oh, yeah, I mean, definitely. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. so many sides to things. You've mm -hmm. got race, you've got politics, you've got religion. I mean, you've got all these mm -hmm. different things, and it seems to be always divided among people. And it, it I mean, Rocky Mountain, I mean, they've come a long way. I, I took... Um, my daughter just recently moved back here from Chicago. hadn't hadn't been here in in six years probably, and I took her down to uh, Rocky Mount Mills and I showed her the houses that they've done. You know, I mean, Rocky Mount's done a lot since I've been here, so I know mm -hmm. it must really feel improved to somebody who's been here a long time. I mean, Rocky Mount is doing. I think "City on the Rise" is a is a applicable. Uh, catchphrase, mm -hmm. but they still got problems. A long way they to got go. a lot of problems, and, and a lot of the problems has to deal with personalities. And yeah, like personalities, race and... it does. But I mean, there, there's just mm -hmm. a lot of there's just a lot of inherent racism mm -hmm. baked into mm -hmm. that too. You know, and mm -hmm. and I it, it, it's it's just really sad that you know you look at like how many sheets are in Nash County. Mm -hmm on the Nash County side of Rocky Mountain mm -hmm. and how many are on the Edgecombe side, mm -hmm. you know, so we're dealing with what, four or five compared to nine, right, nine. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it just, um, I had, you know, me and, uh, Reuben Blackwell talked one day about redlining and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and I, 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 not knowing my own privilege at the time, I, I had a hard time understanding that. But when you look at it over a period of time, you start to see that, you know, why is it that the Nash, the Nash County side has a lot of stuff that the Edgecombe County side does not. But what Why are the people? Nash County folks so angry <laughs> that the event center was built right. on the Edgecombe side or, you know, in downtown? I mean, they, there's a lot of that. Mm -hmm. There's so much noise that people don't even stop, like you say, 
a lot of things get missed. That's, thank you. You just summed up what I've been <laughs> right. what I've been babbling mm-hmm. about for five minutes, and that's exactly <laughs> right. There's, there's a lot of noise, and, mm-hmm. it, and it and it distracts from that's what, right. what really needs to get done and what really is going on. And what's what, what I'm having a problem with is um, uh, black folk is is entertaining the noise, and there's some folks that are always in charge, mm-hmm. and then everybody else just gets lost in the sauce, you know, when when those people's agendas always seem to be reached. Uh, we, like I said, we, we don't have a lot of time. We're going to try to quickly uh, get to the mm-hmm. to the end. But but just, uh, you know, it's just been so much talk about Andre Knight. Mm-hmm. Uh, give me your perspective. And, and, and you know, I know, and, and like you said, I've been here a long time. Well, I, you know, I <laughs> cases in Rocky Mount. And, uh, you know, I got resistance from everybody white or black. Nobody wanted to talk about that. I got huge resistance from the city. I got huge resistance from the mayor at the time, David Combs. I got huge resistance from everybody. There was only one person in the entire city that wanted to talk about that, and that was that was Andre. So that's how I met Andre. You know, I, I didn't meet him as city councilman, as, as councilman night. I met him as the guy that came over to the Brasmo Memorial Library and sat down and talked with me. And connected me with all these families. You know, I was able to write stories that have opened some of these cases back up, has shined a spotlight on the fact that these cases aren't resolved. You know, some of these cases that have been attributed to one person, and we say it's over with, the the method of, of death and all that's totally different than, than what was employed there. So we were able to bring all that out, but none of that would not have happened if I hadn't have sat down and talked to Andre that first day. Well, see, yeah. what happened with that was when you came, uh, Andre and myself and some more, we we had been meeting with the murder and missing women mm-hmm. and, and had even got some people to buy in, even uh, uh, out of state. And what happened with that, again, my people, um, they, they donated money. The women um, 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 took the money and they, were, they, they, they gave us some more. Yeah. But it was just, like I say, it, it just it, it was so sad, sad. Because, um, you know, some of those mothers have died now. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. They ne- they'll never know what happened to their daughters. That's and, right. And and it is a, I mean, it, it's a, it's a terrible thing. It's two steps up, one step back, right? Mm-hmm. Because they, they just can't seem to admit this, this problem. And, and when I first got here, the police chief here at the time, when I first got here, Refused to acknowledge gang problems. Right. He said there was no gangs in Rocky Mountain. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, would, and 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 I think for people who don't know, and I think probably like everybody does, but it would be a simple story if all of these people in charge that we were talking about were all white people. Right. But they weren't. Mm-hmm. We had a black sheriff. We had a black police chief. Mm-hmm. You know, we had uh, a black city council, majority mm-hmm. city council. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's not as simple as like, um, oh, these white people are forgetting these. For right. black women, mm-hmm. you know, because there was a lot of black folks that wanted to forget about it too. Right, just move on. Mm-hmm. That's what I. That's what I kept hearing mm-hmm. all the time. Can't mm-hmm. we just move on? Right, Let's move on. Let's move on. Mm-hmm. So, by the time I began to write about not on Andre Knight, in as far as politics go, I had already known Andre. I mean, I had known Andre for years at that point, and people were misconstruing my coverage of him on a political level. As, as some sort of like personal attack or personal beef, and when I was in the in the in the midst of writing all of them, what really bothered me was I would get uh, little old white ladies would come up to me and they would say, "Oh, I, you know, I really love your writing and all that," but they weren't really commenting on my <laughs> writing. They didn't care about me or my writing. They were just happy that somebody was saying something bad well, about Andre. Andre. Right. Mm-hmm. And Andre again, I mean, he has been so maligned in the media. And, and so uh, just raked over the coals by, by groups like Concerned Citizens and all those folks that white folks try to make him out to be. I mean, that, you know, plain and simple. I mean, he's, he's made mistakes. I've made mistakes, you know. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. But he has is, he is hung in the public arena 
and put up with a lot more than I could ever put up with. I know that's, that's right. I'd have been I'd have been quit and gone a long time ago. Well, either that or either I would um uh be more vocal, and you know he already vocal. Right. But I just don't see how you stand there and don't go off. Well, I think um um. I probably would just have to cuss every now and then or do right. something because because people don't get it sometimes unless well, you use the choice words. <laughs> it's like you said ab ab about us, you know. Um, I, I would be covering Andre in a meeting and we would be texting back and forth during the whole meeting about what he was saying or mm -hmm. what, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's there's just this just this huge misconception in Rocky Mountain that like Andre is the devil mm -hmm. and and um, everybody well actually you know what let me take that back <laughs> there's uh, white folks in Rocky Mountain mm -hmm. seem to think that Andre's the devil and then there seems to be like a, a, a split among some black folks seem to think he's the devil and a lot of white folks seem to think he's he's uh, mm -hmm. uh, an angel Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm I'm here to tell you, if you don't get nothing else out of this meeting, Andre <laughs> is not a devil or an angel. He's mm -hmm, just a person. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. He's just a guy that, that didn't like what City Hall was doing years ago and got involved to try to change things. Mm -hmm. And I think he has changed things. You know, oh, he has. I, I, can't, mm -hmm. I can't run down all the things that, that the council accomplished. You know, uh, Andre and Ruben and, and the rest of them. I can't. You know, I, I, it's a lot of it's left me. Once I once I quit reporting, I've forgotten right. most of what I knew. But I mean, they've accomplished a lot with, and and more importantly than that, they accomplished a lot with a lot of resistance. You know, they had a lot of resistance over the years from folks that just didn't want them to have their way. That's right. They, it just it ate up. There's some folks, and because I've talked to them, because they've talked to me, and they assume that I agree with them, you know, mm -hmm, based mm -hmm. on the color of my skin. But there's just a lot of folks that are just eat up with the fact that that Rocky Mount has, for a long time, or you know, at least what 20 years or so, had mm -hmm. a majority uh, black mm -hmm. membership on the council, and mm -hmm. it just eats them alive. And but you know, you had uh, Chris Miller and. Who else was it? It was not Ron Rogers, right, it, and they voted with them. It right. won't like it was a a, no. ma a a majority black vote. And they voted along with them on stuff that was right, yeah, and most of the right. time they voted with them. You know, and and that's the part I don't understand. Well, like I said again, because of the noise, people don't see what's actually going on. Yeah, you're right. and, and a lot of things that go on, good or bad, like the event center. If Andre and Ruben weren't at the table, it would have been a fine. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, I mean, I agree with that 100%, but uh -huh. at the same time, if they weren't at the table, you probably wouldn't be getting that. It wouldn't be an event center. Right, right. You know, and that's the thing. A lot of stuff that has taken place, it wouldn't be if it weren't for them. So that's why Andre can't, he's kind of stuck in the middle to where he can't back off. That's right. Because, you know, people will say, well, you know, Andre, if you, if you would back off, but it's not true because every time that you... Every time that you back off, the other side pushes forward. That's right. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they'll give no, that other side will give no quarter. I, I got to know <laughs> them quite well over the years as well. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the group, the core group in Rocky Mountain, mm -hmm. the core white group in mm -hmm. Rocky Mountain that feel their power threatening, mm -hmm. they're not going to back off. They're not going to back off. And, and, and see, the back. thing is, I and know, they, I know who they gonna, are. Yeah, I you know, know who they are. Right, you, I was gonna say you know they are. Right, right. Well, we ain't gonna talk about right. who they are because we don't want to expose them because I want them to keep doing what they do. Exactly. Because they don't know I know. You right. know, they, they, some of them know I know, but I'm just saying. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's just like at the national level, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the, the politics you got at the national level. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the the Republican Party is in shambles, but yet somehow they still keep pushing along. They mm -hmm. they still keep. Um, you know, we just had that mass shooting up in Maine, Maine yeah, so with, that. you know, with, 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 with an assault rifle that used to be hard to purchase, mm -hmm. but Republicans made it easy to purchase, mm -hmm. and then they scratched their head about, you know, why have there been so many mass shootings? That's lately? right. Mm -hmm. Well, because they're, the, you're giving <laughs> machine guns away to people. That's right. That's why. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, 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 I'm glad, I'm on a personal level, and this right. is probably selfish of me, Nancy, mm -hmm. I admit it, <laughs> I'm glad to be out of it. Oh, I, I know y'all. I'm glad. I know y'all. I, I, it was, it was such a, uh. It's time consuming. It is. It's you don't get no sleep. I mean, can you imagine me still there? Yeah. It, it bothers me. And to hear the craziness, it bothers me. Yeah. And then you got, <laughs> you got, 
characters like Reverend Higgs. He always made things wow. interesting. Mm-hmm. He made things interesting all the time. Um, I mean, you know, so, I mean, you talk about noise, there's Reverend Higgs for you. Man, I've been but, dealing with this since the 80s and fighting that roster. Lord, oh, I have mercy. So, sometimes, I, sometimes I feel guilty for... <laughs> out of it you know mm-hmm. I mean I saw uh, uh, several years ago that I needed to go back to school I needed to get a, a graduate degree and I needed to start teaching and get out of that mess mm-hmm. and I feel you know sometimes I feel guilty about that but I mean I, I can't go down with the ship <laughs> yeah, I know that's you know right I, mean? I really can't yeah, I, know you know, I, I think right before you started recording we were talking about uh, Gene Metric mm-hmm. and how most people a lot of people who read the telegram maybe not even know Right, that's right. So, you know, no, Gene was a, a tried and true reporter, mm-hmm. came up covering politics at, at the Telegram, you know, been there a long time, and he was a, a great editor. His wife was a good people. You know, I mean, they both died in the last few years, uh, mm-hmm. or she died a few years ago, and he just died recently. Right. But, I mean, it's, um, I, and Jeff, you know, Jeff's gone too. Now, one thing I'll tell you about Jeff was that Jeff was a, uh, a public face of the newspaper that he would talk to people. Mm-hmm. You know, people, if someone had a problem with the telegram, they could come and talk to Jeff and Jeff would listen to him. I don't, I think that's kind of going away. You know, oh, I mean, oh yeah. The, I was the, the old way that I remember I wrote a story about, um, I wrote a story about Andre, uh, not too favorable to him. Mm-hmm, you know, some, mm-hmm. some, some shenanigans he was involved in. Right. Cause you know, one thing you can, have a sure bet on Andre's always involved in some shenanigans. <laughs> That's right. And um, I wrote a story about it, and Andre's mom and dad came to the paper. And Jeff sat in there with them for almost two hours listening to them. You know, mm-hmm. you're not going to find that kind of guy. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, oh, no. I, I, I really do. I think right. they were, mm-hmm. you know, Jeff and Gene were, were mm-hmm. um, they were, I mean, they were unique in the newspaper business, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, and yeah. with the newspaper business dying as much as it is, mm-hmm. and such great people such as myself getting out of it, right? Uh huh. Because it's, bo- it's boring over yeah, there. Yeah, I don't know where it's, <laughs> I don't know where it's going to go. Uh, mm-hmm. Print newspapers, mm-hmm. you know. I, uh, we're here in my office at Barton College mm-hmm. where I teach journalism, and when I got here, they were they were still printing a newspaper they've been printing for 125 <laughs> years. No, no, I take out that. I'm sorry. Since 1927. Mm-hmm. Well, that's almost 100 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They've been printing the same print newspaper that nobody's reading. <laughs> so the first thing I did was redesign it to a, to a website. Okay. Very much like yours. Mm-hmm. Very much inspired by yours, mm-hmm. actually, to where we... W- we put the truth on there every day mm-hmm. and, and, and don't worry about the overhead of printing a paper. That's right. And all that. Mm-hmm. And I think, I mean, that's the future. Well, see, that's with the telegram, at. I subscribe to it, but I don't read it unless somebody tell me there's something in there. But see, I, it, it used to come, um, or they used to deliver it and I had it, the paper copy, print copy going to my dad's house. Right. Now it comes to the um, post office. So I have to take it to him. But I pick up the paper and I don't even look at the front, uh, yeah. the front of it. Well, I mean, I, I, I mean, I hate to say it, I'm, I'm not much of a, a newspaper reader either. And mm-hmm. I mean, that's sad considering I made, I put, you know, I, 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 I raised five kids on the money from newspaper, <laughs> you know. But, but, um, I mean, the internet has just changed everything. Oh yeah, it's, it's changed everything there is. And so when I, but I like it because. I don't have. To, I, I used to have stacks of newspaper. Right. So when they went online, that was the best thing mm-hmm. ever happened to me. And plus, I can forward it. I don't have to copy it. I can forward it right online well, if it's something I want to well, forward. You want to know what's really going on in Rocky Mountain, though. Honestly, mm-hmm. you're going to look at fighting crime. Mm-hmm. You're going to look at your website. Mm-hmm. You're going to look at two five two. That's right. Right. Mm-hmm. Those. That's where the. That's where the news where is. The action is. I mean, that's. Where Mm-hmm. Newspapers are still stuck trying to tell you about the, the Boy Scouts <laughs> and 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 the the, the football game, you know, right? Uh huh. Sports, still, yeah, basically. They're still stuck on something that we don't cover, stuff, right. right? You know, stuff so, that we don't I mean, cover. I, I know there's I know there's an audience for it, mm-hmm. and that's why I come. I try to but, uh, do 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 sports. And I used to um, do it for Southwest volunteering over the years yeah. before the pandemic, and I'm sort of getting I mean, back there, into there, it. There now, is an know. audience for it. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there is. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is that. That's right. Mm-hmm. And newspapers mm-hmm. are also the only business that gives stuff away. That's because right. Because if you go to Coca-Cola.com, you don't get a free code. You know, if you go to <laughs> Nike.com, you don't get a free shoe. That's right. Why do you get a? Why do you get free stories when you go to <laughs> Telegram, RockyMountTelegram.com? You know. Mm-hmm. But they never changed it, and it wasn't just the Telegram's fault. Nobody oh, yeah. changed it. That's and right. So, 
you know, all newspapers have lost their relevance. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really, just like cable news. Oh, yeah. Who, yeah. who listens to cable news anyway but, but, but Grandma? You I only look at Fox 50 News, uh, look, look at it at 10 o'clock. They'll look at the news at 11 o'clock. Yesterday, <laughs> you know that they're not helping anything either. Man, we've been going for a while now. We we're gonna um, bring it to a close, but quickly, um, what do you think about the, the the mayor race in Rocky Mountain? Bronson Williams, I like Bronson, but he 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 he, he don't uh, he can't win. <laughs> I don't know, you know. I mean, poor guy. I mean, I don't know. He was running for office when I got, got here. there. Two thousand fifteen, right. he was running for something, <laughs> state house or something, mm -hmm. and um. It, Bronson never could determine whether he was a a, a journalist or a or a candidate, <laughs> and he would kind of like switch hats a lot back and forth. Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't know. I, I but, but I so, like I like Bronson. I, 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 I did too. You and, know, I did. <laughs> I like him as a person, but I mean, I can separate right, right how how I feel about him personally with what what he's done, and mm -hmm. I I just think that. I don't know that he. That I don't know that he has a, a a chance of winning any any elections. And 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 you know that's not. I mean, I I couldn't win. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'm not saying anything bad about him. I couldn't win. Nobody would vote for me. Mm -hmm. But um, he's just been kind of all over the place. You know, you run well, yeah. with, with all that hate <laughs> around. Oh yeah, him. it's pitiful, but, man. Yeah, I love talking to him though. He was oh yeah. Oh yeah, him. yeah. He he was a clown now. But but yeah, I mean, um, I think I think Sandy's a terrible mayor. Oh I mean, yeah, I think he's a non-existent mayor. I do too. Did, did he win? I, I, uh, I uh, Teresa Austin uh, Stokes is uh, oh, they got a runoff. runoff, right? Okay, and, and well, I, I well, feel good. The same. I hope he loses because, <laughs> because Robeson is uh, he's he's very very Trumpish in his mm -hmm. the fact that he has a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so he, he's not used to anybody telling him the truth. Right, you know, they tell him what 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 he wants to hear. And I remember, you know, I mean, he ran. In his first term as mayor, he ran for Congress, mm -hmm. and that's always a turnoff to voters. Because right? Because if you're if you're running if if you've not even finished your first term in the office that you got, and you're already running for a higher office, that kind of tells your voters uh, that, that you don't care about him. That's yeah, right. He's exactly an opportunist. That's, that's what he is, and that's what, that's what Bronson is an opportunist. And so um, it's sad. Um. Yeah. So, so Sandy, uh, uh, I think. Um, uh, a councilman friend of mine calls him Sandy Claus. Um, <laughs> I do too. Know, um, I tried to stop, but I can't because I know he got so many yeah. uh, black folk around there that he's been good too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. So I no, can't stop. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, he's a businessman. You know oh, what I mean? yeah. It's so funny how we always say, oh, well, he'll be a good politician because he's a businessman. That don't even make any sense. And it should be, and it is. That's right. And so whenever you get a, a business guy that's going to run for office that don't know anything about politics, you you get what we got, and I, and I think Sandy's probably the worst thing to happen. You know, I mean, David <laughs> Combs was no, well, you know, he wasn't great, mm -hmm. but Sandy is just terrible. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, and I, 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 I still enjoy this. Every once in a while, I just sit around and laugh about this too much, mm -hmm. and that is when um, Sandy was riding high right after he got elected on getting elected and everything like that and people he was listening to people and people were drumming mm -hmm. him up mm -hmm. and this happened the whole right around the time that andre was was they found out andre wasn't paying his light bill or whatever so they mm -hmm. were, you know there was this big thing and he put out a press release saying that he was going that at the meeting monday they were going to discuss the fate of andre knight mm -hmm. and i mean like could you be any stupid <laughs> or tone deaf right to talk about a black man <laughs> talk about the fate of a black man at a He's gonna do, and Andre and Ruben just shut him down. <laughs> I mean, shut him completely down. And I don't think he ever stuck his head up again after that. You know, he does his he does his mayoral duties sometimes, and he appears at stuff. You know, but I mean, mm -hmm. I don't see that he's he's not the guy that everybody thought he was gonna be when they elected him. I know that's they right. Thought he was gonna change things and do this and that. And, He's not, and, and plus he's running for Congress anyway. Well, well, he's saying that that's a fake page battle, Patino or whatever it is, but um, and he hadn't said anything about it until it was brought um, brought up, and um, I think they say he said um, Teresa's camp. Well, I know I talked about it, but it was on on the website, and mm -hmm. if it was fake, then why you hadn't said anything about it? Right. So are oh, you talking about where he had filed to run? Right. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw that, mm -hmm. and and um. 
Yeah, he's going to run. He already tried to run. Right, he's going to run. run again. I mean, that's, oh, yeah. And, that's and ain't no he, doubt. You know, that, that, like I say, he was an opportunist. He wanted to start here and go there, get his base. Well, I mean, David you know? Holmes was mayor, so he could sell real estate, right? <laughs> right, I mean, that's right. You know, mm -hmm. I've proven that several times in the paper. Mm -hmm. It, The way that the mayorship is set up in Rocky Mount, I wouldn't want to be mayor. Right. Because they all, they don't have any power. Power, they right. The, they run the meetings. So all. why is it so... Yeah. Why is everybody so... I, that's what I've been trying I to say. I, I don't... I mean, All they gotta do is preside over the exactly. meeting, sign some papers, present plaques, uh, uh, take pictures at the meeting, yep. go out in the community, uh, cut ribbons, cut ribbons. Yeah, they don't I mean, have. They don't, they don't have any real power. They don't right. have to vote. You know, so I mean, I, I think a lot of it is is um, either someone wants to do that, right? Like David Collins, he <laughs> like doing that. <laughs> Or uh, they th look at it. As well, I tell you though, you know, stone. you know, the mayor gets about two hundred dollars more. Oh. So yeah, yeah. So well, two hundred dollars more than two hundred dollars. I mean, they don't. That's <laughs> one thing. I mean, local officials, right? Mm -hmm. Whether they're good or bad, they're crazy to do the job. Right? They don't. People think they're getting something out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, unless you're the mayor of Philadelphia right, right. or New mm -hmm. York, you mm -hmm. ain't getting anything. Right. Because, so, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, some places, that's a full-time job yeah, for a uh, uh, yeah. uh, municipal. So, so, you know, I mean, the, 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 the idea that, that I mean, I, I don't, honestly, I don't know why anybody would do it. I, I, I've asked, I know. Somebody, a couple people have asked me, <laughs> you know, aren't you, are you ever going to run for office or something in Spring Hope? And I'm like, absolutely not. I, all they do is get abused by people right. and get questioned and beat up by, by the public all the time. And on the rare occasion that they do something good, mm -hmm. people just expected them to do that all along <laughs> anyway. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't mm. be a politician. I wouldn't be an elected official for all the money in the world. I know that's right. I've seen it. I've, I've been the guy that was doing all of the attacking mm -hmm. and all the questioning. You know, I, mean, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to put up with that on my end. I know that's right. Well, I, I, we're going to shut it down, and I hope you let me come back again soon, and, yeah, and we do this, and um, I think we might have missed some with the internet going in and out, but I should have brought my hotspot in or either... We'll do it. I didn't even think about it. I didn't know we were doing it live because uh -huh. I got internet problems in here sometimes. Oh, you do? Okay. So I thought yeah. we were recording, so I apologize for right. people about that. Yeah. But okay. we'll find a better place. Yeah. Next, next but, uh, and, and it's going to be soon, too, because, brother, I, I, I tell you, I enjoy I enjoy You got yeah. so much history and, and stuff, and you've been, like you say, you've been on the other side, and that's what I want to hear coming from the other side, you know. Yeah. I, and, I, and I, that's um, what I like. I, the one thing is, is I'm not. um. You know, like you said earlier about, uh, what is it, full-time friends or what? Oh, uh, no, no permanent friends, no yeah, permanent I, I got only permanent no, interest. Um, I got no... I I'm got on no the side beef. of the right, you know. Yeah, I got, I got no beef in this <laughs> with... I mean, I got mm -hmm. no... I got no skin in the game. <laughs> right. I, I mean, I'm just going to tell people how it is. That's There's right. a lot of racist people in Rocky Mountain. <laughs> and, and I saw it firsthand many times. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've seen a lot of the, the bad that goes on, a lot of the unfairness that right. goes on around. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the the mistreatment of poor people mm -hmm. and a lot of the elevation of rich people. That's I've right. seen it all and it, and it makes mm -hmm. you, it, it, after a while, it just makes you jaded to where you, you know, and I, and I, and I have no need for anybody. For no personal about, gain. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I got, I I know, got nothing to get out and, of. And that's what I tell people. It's, it's, it's personal to me because I hate to see people misled and, 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 and people are afraid to speak up. But I can't vote in Rocky Mount, but I'm concerned. Right. You know, yeah. I'm a Democratic Party precinct chair, uh, several on the executive committee, several on the state committee, NWCP member, been Wait, working in Rocky Mount. The, 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 the busiest man in Nash and Edgecombe County. And been working at, uh, in Rocky Mount for 36 years. I got bunches of fans. Uh, Lindell K., former um, uh, investigative journalist in award Rocky Mount. Award winning, right. I don't want to forget that part, but I got it on, the, on, on, the, on, the, uh, on my uh, hit title here. But I appreciate you, man, and, and like I said, let's get back together uh, before the election on uh, November the 7th. Yeah, we'll do that. All right. Appreciate you. Y'all have a good evening.